Hello, this is Patrick Ed 1 CNC West, and what we're going to do in this training video is take a look at creating geometry using 1CNC Mill Express. Now, Mill Express is going to give you the ability to create wireframe geometry. That includes things like lines, points, arcs, splines, text, and things of that nature, which is going to be perfect for this type of part. Now, when creating geometry, there is no set rule in regards to what geometry you need to create first. You can start by creating your holes first, your text first, pockets, whatever is easiest for you. Having said that, one good tip to consider is that you can always create your fillets and chamfers at the very end. So typically, when I create geometry, I always start with the main shapes and then add the fillets and chamfers at the very end. Now for this project, I've created a layer called print, and this is simply a layer we're going to use as a reference just to make sure that I'm on track when creating the geometry. You absolutely do not need to have a layer called print to create geometry. We're just using this for this training exercise. All right, let's get started. Now the first thing I'm going to do is turn off the print layer, and let's head over to the left hand side of the screen and take a look at the command manager. Within the command manager, you're going to find all your geometric tools as well as your toolpaths. Now, we're going to take a look at toolpaths in a later video, but for now, let's just focus on geometry. I'm going to start by creating lines. I'm going to left click the line option. Once I do that, I can see all the different options for creating lines. I'm just going to use the default. Now, from there, we're going to use coordinate input. Now, I must say, there's lots of different ways to use coordinate input but I really like the direct approach and that's what I'm going to demonstrate here. We're going to start our line at X0, Y0, Z0. I think that looks great so I'm going to click OK and what that does is that creates the very beginning of the line and if I move my cursor within the graphics area you can see that this brand new line definitely has a start point locked in at X0, Y0, Z0. I'm going to move my cursor back here within coordinate input and we want this line to terminate at 150 millimeters. So I'm going to type in 150 and click OK. Now again, I call this the direct approach for coordinate input. Now I want the next line to terminate at Y minus 50. That looks good, so I'll click OK to that. Now I want this line to terminate at X 120. That looks great, so I'll click OK to that. And notice how I'm only typing in values for the axis that changes. Now we want to go to Y minus 80, so I'll type in minus 80. That looks great, we'll click OK to that. Now I want to change the X value to 52. Very good, we'll click OK to that. Now we're going to go to minus 50 for the Y value, click OK. We're going to go to X0 now, so I'm going to type in 0 for X, click OK. Now we're going to go to Y0, very good, we're going to click OK to that. And when we're done, we can right hand mouse click or you can hit the escape key on the keyboard. I call that the direct approach to using coordinate input and I think that's a good place to start. Now let's check our geometry with our print. I'm going to head back over here to our layer browser. I'm going to left click on print and as I turn that layer on and off, it looks like we're on track. All right, very good. Now let's create this cutout. We can see that we have a dimension of 19 millimeters from the edge, 15 millimeters for a width, and 30 millimeters for a depth here. So let's create that. So again, I'm going to turn off the print layer. And let's head over to the command manager. And this time we're going to use the line tool called parallel offset. For this, I'm going to type in 19 millimeters. All I need to do now is take my cursor left click this target vertical line and now I can move my cursor to the right or left to create the line. I want it on the left side so I'm going to left click. Now notice how while I'm still in the command I can come over here within the command manager change this to 15. Now we're going to left click this as the target. Again we can move the cursor to the right or to the left. I want it to the left so I'm going to left click very good. Within the command, we're going to come back over here, change this to 30 millimeters. Now we're going to select this horizontal line as the target. We can move down or up. I want to move down. We're going to left click. And when we're done, we can right hand mouse click or hit the escape key on the keyboard. Now with this geometry, we need to trim this. 
I'm going to show you the direct approach and then I'm going to show you a shortcut. To get into the trim commands, let's head over to the command manager and select the trim icon. From there, we can see all the different trim options. We're going to start with trim 2. Trim 2 works just like this. You're going to be selecting two pieces of geometry and you want to select the portion of the geometry that you want to keep. So watch what happens here. I want to keep this portion of the vertical line, so I'm going to left click. I want to keep this portion of the horizontal line. I'm going to left click just like that. Let's do that again. I'm going to left click the portion of the horizontal line I want to keep. Left click the portion of the vertical line I want to keep. And when I'm done, I can hit the escape key on the keyboard or right hand mouse click. Now, to get rid of this line right here, we're going to use the scissor command. Back over to the command manager, we're going to select scissors. I'm going to take my cursor and now using the scissor command, you want to left click what you want to get rid of. I want to get rid of that line right there, so I'm going to left click and when we're done, I'm going to right hand mouse click. All right. Now, let me undo this. I'm going to hit control Z, control Z, control Z, and let me show you the shortcut that I promised. If you want to go into the Trim 2 command, you can always hit Control T on your keyboard, Control T. Once we're there, we can immediately go into trimming our geometry. Now a shortcut to go into the Scissor command is hit the letter X on the keyboard. Now we can left click, and when we're done, we can right click or hit the Escape key on the keyboard. Very good. Let's match this up to our print. I think this looks great. Now let's create this fillet right here. If we take a look at the fillet, you can see that its diameter matches the width of the cutout. So let's create that. I'm going to turn the print layer off. Let's head over to the command manager, go into our arc tools, and from this we're going to use arc through three points. Now though we don't have three points, we can digitize those three lines at the bottom of the cutout to define the arc. I'm going to left click, left click, and left click and when we're done, we can right hand mouse click. Now we can use that shortcut we learned a little earlier by going into the scissor command by hitting the letter X on the keyboard, left click, left click, left click, and left click. All right, now let's take a look at creating this circular cutout. We can see that this cutout has a radius of 30 millimeters. It's located at X 86 millimeters, and the Y value is Y minus 80, with an additional 11 millimeters. So the total Y value is going to be Y minus 91 millimeters. All right, so let's create that. I'm going to turn the print layer off. Let's head over here to the command manager. We're going to go into our arc tools and we're going to create a circle. Now the diameter is going to be twice the amount of the radius. Of course we can do that in our head. We know that 30 times 2 equals 60. But if it was a more complicated number, you can always type in a formula anywhere within one CNC where you have numeric input. So I could type in 30, use the asterisk as the multiplication symbol, type in the number 2, and then hit the equal sign on the keyboard. Very good. Now for the X location, we know that's going to be 86 millimeters. That looks great. The Y value, remember, that's going to be minus 80 millimeters plus an additional 11 millimeters. So again, if you wanted to, you could type in the additional 11 millimeters, hit the equal sign on the keyboard, and that calculates the proper location. Very nice. Now I'm going to click OK to that. When we're done, we can right hand mouse click or hit the escape key on the keyboard. Let's use our scissor command for trimming. So I'm going to hit the letter X on the keyboard. I'm going to left click left click and left click. And when we're finished, I'm going to right hand mouse click. And now once again, let's check this against our print layer. I think this is looking great. So why don't we move forward and start to create the rectangular pocket. So if we take a look at our pocket, we can see that the pocket has a width of 84 millimeters and a length of 40 millimeters. And it looks like it starts here at X of 16, Y minus five. So let's create that. I'm going to turn the print layer off. Let's head over to our command manager. Let's select our line tools. And there's a very handy command in here called rectangle. Let's select the rectangle tool. And for the beginning of the rectangle, we're going to say that's at X 16 millimeters 
and the Y value is going to be minus 5 millimeters. With those values entered, we're going to click OK. Now, we could take the cursor and drag it down to the lower right to create the rectangle, but instead, let's use the numeric input. We're going to say that the length is 84 millimeters, and the height is going to be minus 40 millimeters, and then up here where it says corner radius, we want to make sure we have 5 in there. I think that looks very good, so let's click OK. And that's it. We've now created the pocket. Again, let's check this up against our print. That looks good. And why don't we now create these fillets? And as mentioned earlier, you can really create things like fillets and chamfers any time that you'd like. Now, if we take a look at the print, you can see that all these fillets have a radius of 5 millimeters. Let's turn our print layer off. Head over to the Command Manager. We're going to go into our Arc Tools, select Fillet, make sure the radius is set to 5, and all we have to do now is just digitize two entities where we want to place the fillet. Here you can see I'm just left clicking, left click, left click, and left click. One CNC will also give you a preview. If I left click and hover, you can see we get a nice preview, and then simply left click. So in summary, all you need to do is left click both entities where you'd like to create the fillet. Now let's carry on by creating those four holes. If we take a look, we can see that the holes have a diameter of 5 millimeters, and it looks like they're located at the arc center of those fillets we just created. So let's create those. Let's head back over to the Command Manager, back into our Circle tool. The diameter now is going to be 5 millimeters. Now we don't need to use coordinate input. We can just simply take our cursor and snap the very arc center of those fillets we created. Just move your cursor and wait till you see that little green diamond. That's a confirmation that you're exactly at the arc center. Let's do that here with a left click and a left click. This is looking great. Let's check it up against our print layer. And now let's create the text. To create the text, we're going to head back over to the Command Manager, select our Text Tool, and then use the Text option. From here, we're going to type in what the text needs to be. So I've already typed in Lock Dine 31. We want to now check our font attributes. Now, within the font attributes, I'm going to be using true type fonts, but I want to change this to Arial. So I'm going to scroll up, select the Arial font, bold, and for the height, let's go with 5 millimeters. So I'll type in 5. That looks good. Let's click OK to that. OK. And I'm going to take my cursor and I'm just going to left click where I want it. Now, one thing that's important to note is that when you create text, if we're going to machine this, if we're going to engrave this, we need to convert this text into geometry. Now, we can easily do that by heading back over into the Command Manager, and we're going to select this option called Text to Geometry. Once we've done that, we can simply take our cursor, left-hand click on the text, and now it's converted to lines and arcs. And now we can easily apply our toolpath later on to engrave it. All right, that's it for this training video. We took a look at how we can easily create geometry using 1CNC Mill Express. Thanks for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.